Our next video is a revision of Roux and Y gastric bypass for gastrogastric fistula, subtotal gastrectomy, and Roux and Y esophageal jejunostomy. Uh, will be presented by Tsaber Agiasi from uh, University of uh, California in San Francisco, Fresno. Good morning. I would like to thank Sages for the opportunity to present the video this morning. We have nothing to disclose. Uh, this video is of a challenging case of gastrogastric fistula uh, after a Roux and Y gastric bypass. The patient is a 48-year-old woman who had an adjustable gastric band placed in Mexico. This was followed by laparoscopic converted to open revision to Roux and Y gastric bypass at an outside institution in the U.S. Uh, she had presented to us with a one-year history of epigastric pain, solid food dysphagia, and severe reflux, and on her preoperative workup, she was found to have a gastrogastric fistula. She also had an extensive past surgical history, as you can see, which inclu included open hernia repair with mesh. Uh, the next diagram will show our trocar placement. She was taken to the OR, and as you can see, there were extensive adhesions, especially in the left upper quadrant, the of the abdomen. These were all taken down using the harmonic scalpel. Uh, we identified the retrocolic rule limb, and this was dissected out to make sure that the limbs uh, were of appropriate length. We then proceeded to separate the gastric remnant from the gastric pouch and the rule limb, and we performed upper endoscopy you can see the scope would easily pass into the remnant through the fistula, but we could not pass the scope uh, into the rulum. So we then made a gastrotomy in the uh, gastric remnant to localize the fistula tract. And here you can see the fistula tract near the G junction. Uh, we then divided the, uh, the remnant distally using a linear cutting stapler. And we proceed with dissecting out the gastric remnant from the surrounding structure. Here we're taking it down from the pouch and the rule limb. And we work towards the hiatus on the left side. We like to expose the left cruise of the diaphragm. Some posterior attachments are taken down. And here are some of the lateral attachments and the short gastrics. And finally here we divide the fistula tract. And so the proximal remnant is separated. You can see the upper endoscope through the fistula tract at the G junction. We then proceed with uh, mobilizing the medial aspects on the right side and identifying the right crease of the diaphragm. We always like to dissect out the hiatus to make sure there is no hiatal hernia present. We put an esophageal retractor under the G junction. We then staple off the rule in approximately near the uh, uh, gastrojejunostomy and then uh, divide the ischemic portion once it's been stapled off. So here the proximal portion of the rule limb is taken down at the gastrojejunostomy. So there's a 32 French U wall tube uh, through the fistula. We couldn't pass it through the lumen of the gastric pouch. And so we started to divide the pouch proximally towards the G junction and found out that the lumen was obliterated uh, completely proximally. So we decided to take down the pouch completely 
uh, separating it at the gastro, at the esophagogastric junction. And you can see the tube sitting in the distal esophagus. Uh, we then oversaw the staple line uh, of the distal gastric remnant. This is uh, the proximal roux, so we make an enterotomy at the staple line. And then we perform an esophageal jejunostomy with mul multiple entrapted sutures um, circumferentially. So here we're placing the posterior sutures. They're all full thickness. So once the posterior uh, layer is done, we pass the 32 French tube across and then proceed with completing the anterior portion of the anastomosis. and put a bowel clamp on the rule limb and perform a leak test that was negative. Uh, the transverse mesocolic defect is closed around the retrocolic rule limb. Gastrotomy is made in the uh, gastric remnant. We routinely put in uh, gastrostomy tubes in our revisions with a purse string suture. The specimen is taken out and a gastrostomy tube is placed and secured. And finally, we're going to leave a drain by the anastomosis. So there was an upper GI the following day, which was negative, and we started the patient on clear liquids, and she was discharged on postoperative day number two. Uh, on follow-up, she's been doing well, uh, and actually has lost weight, and all of her, her symptoms have resolved. So gastrogastric fistulas uh, occur in one to six percent of gastric bypasses for various reasons. Uh, usually a remnant gastrectomy is the treatment for it. Actually, the point of uh, this video is that with patients, no matter how difficult the cases are, they can be completed laparoscopically. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Yeah. Back microphone. I'm curious, what was the pathological examination of the resected uh, piece of anastomosis? Was it a stricture, secondary to, or concomitant ulcer, secondary to gastrogastic fistula? Well, just chronic inflammation, and we think that probably there was chronic ulceration, which uh, led to the scarring. How are you doing? Frank Barreo from New Jersey. I have a question regarding the anastomosis. I've been uh, fortunate enough to have, you know, experience in esophageal resections laparoscopically. And when you mobilize the crura, a lot of times you have the esophagus retracted, the posterior metastinum, and it's not very easy to do a hand-sewn anastomosis. We typically utilize uh, circular Orville. What do you do in that case if it would have retracted significantly high up in the posterior metastinum, you could not suture? Well, as you can see, there were extensive adhesions and there wasn't really a big hiatal hernia, so the so distal esophagus was sitting there nicely. 
but I think we probably would have put in some traction sutures to kind of make sure that it stayed down and then performed the anastomosis. Because yeah, typically when you get into the virgin territory, once you open up the freno, uh, esophageal ligament, it'll retract up. In this right. case, you still had enough sufficient length. But that's right. not always the case. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Abraham from New Jersey. Um, do you make any attempt in all these revisions to look for the vagus nerve at all? Uh, I think we do usually if there aren't extensive adhesions. In this case, as you can tell, there was really no way to tell if the nerve was intact or not. And, you know, since we're doing an esophageal jejunostomy, I think, you know, the emptying of the small portion of the remnant is not going to be a big issue for this patient. Uh, another technical point. What do you do with the gastrostomy? Do you try to attach it to the anterior abdominal wall? You know, we don't routinely. And in training, I was taught to do that. But we don't. And usually, we don't use the gastrostomy tube for the first day, uh, you know, on post-op day one, it's to gravity, and then we clamp it, and rarely it's used, and we usually pull it out in about six weeks Thank you. after the operation. Thank you, Dr. Gassi. Thank you.